Hello, my friends, and welcome back to The Writer's Block, and welcome to 2023. Uh, it's been a minute since I've uploaded any videos. This video, I apologize for the sound. There's not going to be any editing or funny memes or anything like that. I'm just using my phone and the built-in microphone. Uh, this is just going to be a one-take, shoot, no edit, upload. Um, it's a reading recap of 2022, so I apologize. You'll have to put up with any mistakes or ums and likes and ahs and pauses or stumbling over my words. Um, but I made a list of some of my favorite books from 2022. Uh, not all of them were published in 20, 2022. There's the first mistake. Um, there's a lot of honorable mentions on here. Some books that were disappointing to me and some that I didn't finish. So, but hopefully you'll, this will give you some guidance. Um, you've likely read a lot of these. Maybe you haven't heard of some of them and you'll pick up something new. And you maybe will avoid a couple of these uh, just based on my recommendations and criticism. Um, so with that said, um, let's jump in. Like I said, this is going to be an unedited video, just one take. Um, and the reason for that is if you watch any of my past videos, I've mentioned that I've had some nerve problems um, in my hands. And so I'm unable to use the computer for extended periods of time to edit videos or... So this one, um, yeah, it's been a little bit worse this last month. And so this video will be unedited. So sorry, no memes. Um, but hopefully in 2023, it's gonna be a better year. And I'm hopeful that I'll get things resolved and I'll be able to create some more videos. I have, I have a lot of videos that I've shot and I just haven't been able to edit. And I have a lot of ideas for videos I'd like to do for this channel. Uh, but in the meantime, here are here's what I read in 2022. Um, so this year I read a bunch of books. I'm not totally sure how many. I read six, six Wheel of Time books. I read the Autumn Republic trilogy, or sorry, Powder Mage trilogy. Um, I finished the books of Babel. I read the four books in Era 2 of Miss Spawn. Um, I read a bunch of books with my daughter that I'll cover here. But I think the best book I read in 2023 was Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Um, there is... Actually, I shot a video talking about this. This is the Russian edition. Um, there's a lot of different translations that are very good. I did not read the Russian edition, but this is a gift that someone gave to me. Uh, I think this is probably my all-time favorite book. I highly recommend it. There's an excellent um, narration. There's an excellent audiobook. Um, really well, really, the narrator just does an excellent job bringing the story and characters to life. And it's based on the, the Constance... Gardner translation, I want to say, but it's on Audible, and it's included with your membership, so you don't even have to spend, if you have an Audible membership, you don't even have to spend a credit. You can just listen to it for free, and it's fantastic. It's probably one of the best audiobooks I've ever listened to. Um, yeah, I there's lots of different translations. If you are wondering which translation to pick up, I, I do have some recommendations. Uh, Russian is my second language, so I do, I am going to try to, like, tackle this in Russian, sometime probably 2023 i don't know um but that is my number one recommendation everybody should read that book it's really fantastic number two book imagine a graphic right here with the cover because i read this on ebook is 112263 by stephen king um <clears throat> another honorable mention on the list is fairy tale by stephen king which is a portal fantasy i have a review for it on the channel it's it's a great book i recommend it um not my favorite Stephen King book, but a lot of people said, "Oh, you really liked you really liked uh, Fairy Tale, Stephen King Portal Fantasy. You should go check out eleven twenty two sixty three. And I'm really glad I did. <clears throat> it's an excellent book, really well written. Kind of like slows down a little bit in the middle, and the and the, the beginning is a little jarring. Like I feel like it's kind of like stumbling into the story, um, and then it, <clears throat> there's some really fantastic stuff. Um, kind of about like the quarter to a third mark it was I just like it was so emotional I don't want to get into spoilers here but <clears throat> really emotional scenes 
really just incredible and I'm say, saying really a lot and I apologize for that but great book and then um, it's kind of slows down a bit in the middle and lulls you into this to what the character is experiencing as he's falling into life in the past it's a time travel book if you're if you're not aware um, and then fantastic ending just really thought-provoking I, I really liked it a lot I, I think it's second best book that I read this year uh, so that's number two uh, number three I do have a copy right here my third favorite book don't judge a book by its cover because it's Lord of Chaos and this looks like a cheap romance novel but it's not it's this is the I think it's the sixth book in the Wheel of Time series if you're not counting the prequel I thought this was excellent I really loved um, and that's another of my top books was The Great Hunt, which is number two. So I started, I read Eye of the World last year and New Spring last year, and then I started this year off with The Great Hunt and read all the way up to Lord of Chaos. <clears throat> and, no, I read I read through A Crown of Swords. A Crown of, Crown of Swords, is that what it was? Book seven? So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. I thought book two was great. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> how do you how do you like encapsulate so much? There's so many books here, right? Uh, I thought book one was an excellent introduction to the world and characters. Book two was very different than book one, uh, very unexpected. It's sort of like a heist novel, uh, but it took the but the world really came into its own. I felt in book two, and I really enjoyed book two and three was good. Um, four was great. Five was good. Some really exciting stuff happened in five. And then I felt like six was just like this incredible book. For some reason, I just, by that time, I, maybe I was just, I had built up so much momentum in reading the series. And then I got to six and just by the end of six, I was like, whoa, it just blew my mind. Um, so I really am looking forward to reading more of the series. But this does bring me to one of my disappointments, which was Crown of Swords. I felt like there was so much momentum built up in these first six books. And then, and Crown of Swords should have just been like, just bolting out of the gate like a racehorse. But it just, it lost so much momentum. And not a lot happened in the book. I just, it was very forgettable to me. So that's my first uh, kind of disappointment of the year. <clears throat> And then, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep reading these. I have a lot to read in 2023. I've got like those four Sanderson books that are coming out. Um, I'm partway through the first one right now. And then I want to finish <clears throat> The Wheel of Time. There's a bunch of other series that have been recommended to me that I haven't even started. Um, let's see, what else is... Oh, my next book. Oh, uh, boom. Dune Messiah. For a long time, I put off reading this book just because... I love the first book. It's one of my all-time favorite books. <clears throat> and a lot of people, I'm sorry I'm clearing my throat a lot. I'm getting over a cold. Uh, but a lot of people I've heard had mixed feelings or negative feelings towards Dune Messiah. Like it's sort of like a antithesis to the first book. Um, <clears throat> and so I put off reading it for a long time. Uh, just because I didn't want to taint the first book, my love for the first book in any way. But this year I got around to reading it, and I'm really happy I did. It is very different than the first book. You know, I feel like there's a, a book missing in between the two. Like an action-heavy, really exciting book of Paul Atreides conquering the known universe or whatever. But then this book is sort of like the falling action of that story. It's the downfall of Paul Atreides, and it's an interesting way to look at it look at it because if you are someone like Paul Atreides that has this gift of foresight and can see possible futures and also your enemies can see possible futures well what does that mean for you um it's it's just it's a great book and I really like it really thoughtful um it's sort of the denouement to the Dune series I would like to read book three and four and of Herbert's original Dune series this next year. I'm hoping to get around to that. And then um, the other book that I wanted to recommend, of a top recommendation for this 2022, is Atomic Habits by James Clear. I don't read a lot of like self-help books. I don't really like that label that much. Um, 
and I feel like a lot of them are just repetitive. Uh, I've read a few in the past, and <clears throat> a lot of them are really repetitive, and they're more just like raw, raw books, trying to like boost your spirits and make you feel like you can conquer the world and give you really, and, and a lot of them are just authors bragging about how successful they are and the crazy things they do, and they tell you to do things that I feel like are unsustainable, like wake up at 4 a.m. every day and and uh, shower and shower with ice and cold showers and just stuff that makes your life miserable but this was like a more practical approach and it kind of talks more about like the neuroscience like how your brain creates habits and how you can create habits that benefit your life so if you have artistic goals um, or anything like that I think this is a good read because it's just like little things you can do to tweak your life um, to build bigger habits and it didn't none of it feels impossible um, and it's not the author just like bragging about how amazing he is and how much better he is than everyone else um, but I thought it was very thought provo thought provoking um, I recommend it I think this if you're gonna read just like one self-help book this is probably it um, some honorable mentions honorable mentions for this year we already talked about fairy tale um, I read with my daughter I read <coughs> Harry Potter and I read The Hobbit, and she loved both of these books. She's five, and it was just really fun to share with her books from my childhood that I loved. Harry Potter was the book that started getting me into reading when I was a kid, and she just loved this book. She was so enamored by it, and we read like a chapter every night, and she'd want to keep reading, and she was on the edge of her seat when they're in the Forbidden Forest and at the end with the three-headed dog and going through all the different um, traps that are, you know, set there to protect the Sorcerer's Stone. She just loved it. And she's been re-listening to the audiobook just over and over and over and over again. We watched the movie together and she loved it. Um, and very similar experience with The Hobbit. I think we read this one first. And we haven't read The Lord of the Rings yet. I think we'll wait a couple years to do that, but... It was just so much fun to read those with her um, and to see her, that spark of the love of reading and fantasy in her. <clears throat> what else did we read? So um, another honorable mention. So this year I read Mistborn Era 2, and the fourth book came out this year to cap off the series. I really love, I've got, you might not be able to see it here, but I've, I've got the original leather-bound Mistborn series here. And I really love this series. <coughs> Excuse me. So sorry. <clears throat> this is the series that got me back into fantasy as an adult. I feel like kind of like end of high school, beginning of college, I sort of fell out of love with fantasy. I started thinking I was too cool for it. Uh, you know, I started reading literature. And then this was the series that got me back into fantasy, realizing like, oh, it's just you can have a lot of fun and it can still be just really well written book with great characters. Um, <clears throat> and then I, I th shortly after I read the original Mistborn book books, I picked up the first and second Mistborn era two books and it was just so different. Um, it was, it felt really disappointing to me because these books were so epic. And then I read the second era Mistborn books and I was like, what is this? This is like almost cartoonish and just not as good <laughs> and so I didn't read the third one and then the fourth one was coming out this year <clears throat> and I thought okay I'll revisit these books and I'm really glad I did I still don't think they're as good as the first Mistborn book but they are once you re recognize them for what they are and you can appreciate them for what they are then they become really fun they're sort of just I can I kind of imagine like if they were to be adapted into a film it'd be like a Guy Ritchie Sherlock Holmes film like those Robert Downey Jr., Jude Law, Sherlock Holmes films, where you just, it's just that kind of style of fun. It, it just feels like Brandon Sanderson's just having fun with it. Um, and I, I think he did a really good thing mixing up, up the magic system in the world. <clears throat> and I really, I enjoyed it a lot more the second time through. Uh, finished the series, I thought the fourth book did a good job of ending things. Still not my favorite of Sanderson's work, honestly. I, I think... The original Mistborn series and the Stormlight Archive are like top tier fantasy. 
and Mistborn Era 2 is just like B story Cosmere stuff. Um, but it's fun, and I think you just have to enjoy it for what it is. Uh, I think, like I mentioned, I think uh, mixing up the magic system was a great idea instead of just having the same magic system carry over into the second era, but having it so one fair chemical and one uh <laughs> i'm forgetting my terminology here but yeah so that you could have one fair chemical and one alimantic power each for these misborn people was was, was great um <clears throat> let's see what else did i miss oh honorable mentions <coughs> so sorry you're probably sick of hearing me cough should have waited but i didn't want to wait to make this video um, Honorable Mentions, Powder Mage Trilogy by Brian McClellan. I loved the first two books. Uh, I thought that Promise of Blood and Crimson Campaign... Cr Promise of Blood was like a great introduction to this world. I loved the characters, fantastic magic system, awesome setting. Crimson Campaign was even better than Promise of Blood. And then I felt like there was building up all this momentum to the third book, and I just was waiting for all these things to happen in the third book. And then I read the third book, and like none of those things happened. It was sort of just like a subversion of expectations. Um, so the first two books are honorable mention, and the third book, The Autumn Republic, to me, was a disappointment. Um, so it's going in the disappointment category along with Crown of Swords. Um, I still, still a good book. I. I knocked something over. Uh, still a good book. I would still read more from this author in this world, and I'm planning to. Um, I just was disappointed by that that ending to the trilogy. Uh, the last honorable mention that I read recently, because it won like a Goodreads award, and I was like, oh, what's this book? Was Babel by R.F. Kuang. Is that the right name? I think so. Uh, this is like a dark academia, is the way that people have been describing it online, which I don't know what that is. But what it is, is like a Victorian era, it's kind of like a soft magic system. Not really. It's a hard magic system that's weak, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, the idea of behind this book is that there are these scholars who all come to Oxford from all around the world. And they, through the magic of translation, they're able to, between languages so if you have a language like chinese and english you try to translate it over you're not always able to completely carry that meaning and somewhere in between there is like something magical can happen when the the true meaning is lost isn't carried over um so it's like a, a very language based book and i really loved the the study of language and etymology in this book and i think if you're you know if you're a reader and if you're someone who speaks multiple languages you'll have a great appreciation for this book um i didn't think it was perfect i think the magic system it was a little bit odd to me that they had like such this this such this this amazing magic system but it didn't really seem to have a big impact on the world like the whole world is centered around the magic system and relies on it, but I didn't feel like the world itself was very magical as a result of the magic system, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> the world is kind of just the same as it would be, whether or not the magic system was there. Uh, it's Victorian era, kind of like steam engines, but instead of steam, you have these silver bars that are that carry different translations, and because of the the, the meaning of the translations, cause incredible things to happen, um, magical, scientific things to happen that can propel vehicles or um, heat things or provide light, um, power, hold up bridges. Um, so it's just, it's, I don't know. I liked it a lot, <laughs> but I was still a little bit disappointed at the end just because I felt like there was so much more potential with this magic system. And I would like to, this is a one-time, one-off book, a standalone novel, so we're, I don't think we're ever really going to see a sequel. <coughs> Excuse me. But I would like to, and I'd like to see this magic system explored more. I also felt like the main character never really mastered the magic, and I wanted to see him do that and become awesome. Um, racism was a big theme in this book, and I appreciated it. 
because it was sort of a unique look at an era which we tend to romanticize. Usually we look at Victorian era London, um, and we think of like, you know, I don't know, we think of this time period as being very elegant, but there's also a lot of terrible things that were happening, and <clears throat> I shouldn't be talking this much coming off a cold because I'm losing my voice already, but we're almost done. Um, I felt like the racism was handled really well, but I felt like um, it was a little bit too black and white, so to speak. It was like it literally by the end became whites and non-whites. And I would like to see a little bit more nuance in there. Um, I, I get that that's probably the most effective way for the author to drive her point home. But um, yeah, I just, I thought it was a little bit heavy handed. Not enough nuance. Um, and then, so we've covered a couple of my two disappointing novels, which were Crown of Swords and Autumn Republic. My last disappointment of 2023, hot take right here. Sorry, this is going to ruffle some feathers, but Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Uh, this book was fine. It had a lot of hype around it online. I saw a lot of positive reviews. People were just like in love with this book. And, and, and it says it right on the cover that this is like a low stakes story. And for me, it just wasn't enough to get invested into. I just didn't, I didn't really connect with the book. It's pretty short. I feel like this is like the B story to another more interesting book. And I don't know. I, I would recommend it as a quick read to some people, but I just didn't connect with it. I didn't love it as much as other people seem to have just loved this book so much. And it's like on their favorite books of the year. And to me, I'm just like, I don't get it. So sorry. Um, two DNFs did not finish these two books. Um, my daughter and I read a lot of Roja Doll books this year. And the one that I just could not finish. I, I liked all these books. I loved Charlie and Chocolate Factory, the BFG, Matilda, uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox, James and the Giant Peach. We had fun with all those. And then this book, Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. This book is bizarre. It is a sequel to Charlie and the Cho Chocolate Factory in space with aliens and like the president of the United States. Oh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't get into this book at all. And I just, it was just like, this is, this book was paid for by the first book as a cash grab sequel. Oh, it was not good. I did not like it. And my daughter didn't care for it either. We stopped reading it and she never asked another question about it, but she liked the other books. Um, and my last dishonorable mention, The Passenger by Cormac McCarthy. I could not get into this book. Um, I was really excited when I heard that a new Cormac McCarthy book was coming out. I love No Country for Old Men and The Road. Great books. And then I picked up this book and I started reading it and I just could not get into it. It was really disorienting. I don't know. I did the hit. I just, I put it down. I made it like a couple chapters in. I didn't know what the heck was going on. I just couldn't stick with it. Maybe I was in the wrong mindset. Maybe you have read it and you liked it. Uh, if so, maybe I'll give it another shot if you really, really liked it. But other than that, that's kind of a summary of most of what I've read this year. Um, what have you read this year that you really liked? Have you stuck with me through this 24, 25 minute video? Uh, what books did you read? What were the best books you read this year? What were the ones you would counsel that people should avoid? Um, thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you back here soon. I don't know when my next video would be. I, th I think I'll do a video talking about um, best m TV shows, worst TV shows, best movies, worst movies, what I'm going to read in 2023. I think I've covered some of that already in this video. I might go more in into details on my plans for 2023. Um, if you're interested in keeping up with my health journey with my nerves, um, I'd maybe I'll, you know, maybe I'll do a video covering some of that. Um, I'm hopeful that 2023 is going to be a better year and I can get back to focusing on this channel. It's something I've wanting, been wanting to do, but I just keep getting hampered down by these health problems. Um, 
and uh, it got really severe this last month during NaNoWriMo actually and I I tried to do NaNoWriMo and I think that's what like pushed me over the top and I, all my symptoms just like flared up <clears throat> my 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 muscles actually started to atrophy in my arm and so I went to the doctor went to the physical therapist been doing like all this physical therapy <coughs> excuse me long story short um I've seen some improvement but not a lot so I'll, I'm going to be speaking with a surgeon this week and hopefully they'll have some answers for me some long-term solutions and then I can get back to making better videos that are edited down more succinctly more punchy have some more memes in them um and you know thanks for watching if you have so far hope to see you back here soon